Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Mamiya C3. The Mamiya Z3 is an interchangeable lens medium format SLR. And what that means is just that the lenses on the TLR can be taken off of the camera and put back on. And if you do the process right, and we'll see how to do it in the second video, it doesn't ruin your photos. You have to do the process right because this has leaf shutters in the lenses. It does not have a focal plane shutter like most interchangeable lens cameras. So if you don't do the process correctly, and this camera's pretty much set up to guarantee that you will do it correctly, but if you don't, you can ruin your images. You will ruin your images. There's, there's no could about it. This camera has no meter unless you have the metered prism, which I don't. It has shutter speeds from one second to one five hundredth. Typically, I, I can't recall if any of the other shutters have different shutter speeds on them or not. I don't think so. I think that they all use the same basic Seikosha shutter with slightly different versions of which exact one it is, but that it is all um, one second to one five hundredth. The viewfinder, which is here on the top, has 1x magnification. Oh, this guy's bent. I always forget that and forget to bring a screwdriver or something that I can pry that up with. There we go. You can see the viewfinder here, maybe now a little bit more clearly. It has a plain matte focusing screen, which is interchangeable with some effort with five total options for focusing screens. And what I mean by some effort is here's the focusing screen. As you can see, it's a plain mat here with a little central circle. If you undo these five screws, you can get to it for cleaning or to put on a different focusing screen. And the flash sync on this camera is any speed because it uses leaf shutters. There we go. The target market on this camera was the professional user, and we know that because it's a medium format camera, it's a TLR, it's interchangeable, it has interchangeable lenses, it has a lot of pro-level features and none of the non-pro-level features. It also says professional on the bottom, and that's a really good clue that it's meant for professionals. Also has excellent build quality and the lens optics are just fantastic. Their, Mimia makes great lenses or made great lenses and um, the optics on these are really great. It was made by Mamiya in Japan from 1962 until 1965. This was preceded by the Mamiya Flex C2 Concurrent with the Mamiya's 4B Super Merit Super Deluxe Nicorex or Nicorex F, which Mamiya made for Nikon, the Prismat CPH and Prismat CP CWP, and Mamiya press cameras. Now, all of those except the press were 35 millimeter cameras. The press camera was a, I forget if it was a 2x3, which is a 6x9 camera, or if it was a 4x5. I think it was a, a, a 6x9. And then this was followed by the Mamiya C33. Now, if you have your Mamiya C3, we're going to start taking a look at it here on the top. And here we have, well, here we have the strap lugs, which you would connect your strap or leather case to. Mamiya and C3 name and badge. Here we have the viewfinder cover that folds up and still doesn't pop out because it's really badly bent. Viewfinder hood, magnifying glass right there. And if we take the, uh, let me shine some light here so it's a little bit easier to see. If we take the front of the viewfinder hood right here and push it in, and we can lock it in place or, well, not on this camera, we can't because the lock is missing. But if on a working camera, that locks in place and now you have what's called the sport finder where you look through the back here and then through the opening where the front cover was and you don't have you, you just line that up roughly with the scene and you don't have to if you're pre-focused then you don't just take the picture when you when you want to it's called sports finder because it's ideal for using it on sports 
On the camera's front, we have the lens mount, which I'll show you here in just a sec. Here's the lens mounting area. You can, might be able to, uh, let's see if we can illuminate this enough. Might be able to see that red line right there. That flips up and we'll see that in video two when it is uh, safe to remove the lens. And you would see that looking down through the viewfinder. Um, that, that also is a reminder that your baffle right here is up so that, because as long as this baffle is up, you can't take photos, or you could, but there'd be no light reaching the camera, or the, the film rather. So we have the lens mounts here, the lens locking bar right here, or release lever, it's called lens release lever. Yeah, we will go over the lenses in video, well, this lens in video two, and look at how to use the lens. Here we have the flash PC port. This is the shutter arming lever. Here we have, over here is the trigger for the um, shutter, but you can push down on this guy here on the side and fire the shutter. Up here we have X and M, which is your bulb sync uh, selection. And basically, you want to leave it in X, which is the modern type of flash. This is your, it's a flash sync, that's the word I'm looking for. X is a modern flash, M was for bulbs. And uh, bulbs really, and they're still made, but they're, not, they're expensive, they're not super practical. Any flash you can buy today is an X type and would sync with this camera on X. The flash sync, of course, is any shutter speed because it's a leaf lens. And then here's your aperture selection lever right here. On the camera sides, we're gonna start on the left. Here we have the accessory cold shoe. You could put a flash in here, but there is nothing in this shoe to trigger a flash. There's no contacts, which is why it's called a cold shoe. There's no electricity running to it. So if you're gonna use a flash here, you would need a PC cable to connect it to the, to the flash PC socket right there. This right here is your lens lock release button. This is your take up spool catch stud. This is your lens release flap lock. Focusing scale, we'll see how to use this in the second video. Focusing knob. And this is your film spool catch stud. Yeah, film spool catch stud. Now if we go over to the right side here, here we go, frame count window. This is your shutter mode selection, multiple exposures and sheet film or roll film right down here like that. So what type of um, film you use governs, or whether you're taking a double exposure governs what you'll set this in. We're gonna leave it in sheet and multi for this video because I am plumb out of 120 film and don't have anything to show you how to use this camera with in video two. Darn it. Um, anyway, shutter release button here, cable release socket up here, focusing scale here, it's a different focusing scale than on the other side. We'll see that in video two as well. And this is the film advance lever for when you're shooting your 120 film. And I forgot to show you over on this side, behind the knob there's a little black dot and that is your focusing scale index. On the back of the camera we have this screw right here which you can undo to release the focusing hood. Just unscrew it a little bit. Now you can take the hood off and put a different prism on or swap out the focusing screen. Here we have the red window for lining up your film. Here we have the film back release, which allows you to open up the back of the camera and get into the film chamber. We'll be back to that in just a second. The camera's bottom doesn't have a whole lot. Tripod socket right there. So we'll go inside the camera here. This is where you put your, uh, your roll of film that you're going to use. Film guide roller, film guide roller, film guide rails right in here. The little red dot at the top is your start index. 
This is your take up spool. So you put an empty spool in here and then it will take up the film that you're going to use. And here on the back we have the film pressure plate right here and the little red window you can see. And that's really, oh, and then um, you can see that flip up baffle right there. Let's try that again this time with some light. Maybe it'll be easier to see. That baffle is what you would use when you switch lenses to prevent light from getting in through the opening on, in the front of the camera and ruining your film. And then when it's not in place to block the light, it's on the bottom. And because it's flocked, it is doing a good job of reducing it, any glare and things like that that come in um, from reflections within the camera obscura right there. So that, those are all of the features. Oh, I put this back on incorrectly. Shame on me. There we go. That's better. This is expensive gear, even though it's beat up. Okay. So those are all the different buttons on the camera. In the second video, we're going to talk about what they do and how to use the camera in much greater detail than this. Some things not to do with your camera, don't store it with tension on the shutter. These leaf shutters are um, all clockwork and they're all activated by springs. So if you store them with tension, what you're doing is to, to arm them, they get tension put on the springs. And if you don't fire them before you store it, the springs stay like that so that over time they'll develop a memory and get weaker and your, your shutter timing will be off. So anytime you're done shooting for the day, just make sure you trigger your shutter before you put your camera down so that you're taking the tension off of those springs. Don't touch the mirror in here when you have the lenses off of the camera because your, your finger oils can get onto the mirror and they can cause it to desilver, which will affect viewfinder brightness and can also affect your ability to focus accurately. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car. It's an, th this is an older camera, but it looks professional level. It says professional on it, so you know it is. And it also would be a very appealing target to camera thieves. So don't leave this in your car, be, not only because it could get stolen and it's better to have a camera than no camera and a broken window, but also the heat from your car in the summer can cause the oils, especially in the shutter mechanism, to get very thin and get places they shouldn't be, which can affect your shutter timing. Um, but the cold can also cause those same, same oils to get thick and gummy and break down and affect your shutter timing. So don't leave your camera in your car. Don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box unless you have a rechargeable desiccant pack in it because water will permeate plastic over time and water in this camera could mildew or mold the covering and could also affect your lenses, which would make them less sharp, less contrasty, and overall just impair your image quality. Also, don't let this get wet. It's a professional camera, but it is not weather sealed. Water in your lenses can cause the mechanism to rust and water in the camera can ruin it either through rust or through causing mildew and mold to grow in the coverings and in the bellows. And just remember your Mamiya C3 is a precision instrument. As long as you handle it with care and respect, your, and as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that was it for video one of two on this, the Mamiya C3. If you have any, if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track making content which is helpful and useful to you. If you have any thoughts or suggestions or comments or questions, please leave those below. And I'm pretty good about checking back and responding every couple of days. If you would like to subscribe, you can do that. And then remember to turn on that notification bell. And one last thing, thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in part two.